us on this um, Elector television, Elector TV webcast. Um, for your information, we've moved our entire studio from our normal place to this place, and that has been a hell of an effort. Thanks to everybody. For today's is a rather special occasion, very special, I think, um, because we have Benedict Sauter um, presenting on his Linux project. My name is Jan Buiting. I am the editor of Elector Magazine. The embedded Linux project was uh, first published in Elector Magazine in, uh, was it correct, Benedict, in the May yes, issue 2012. It has covered like 80 pages, I think, in the magazine with a huge success and a huge response. The project is not finished yet. That's what we like. We like projects to go on, to continue with the audience, with you, with your developing skills and everybody helping out. Right, Benedict, and welcome. And thanks for uh, being with us it's today. Nice to be here. Perhaps you can tell just a few words on your background as a designer uh, and how you came about doing Linux instead of Windows, perhaps. Ooh. <laughs> yes, um, my, uh, I started to work with PCs uh, when I was very young, about 12. I started with this C64. S Commodore 64? Yes, yes. yes. Um, and then I have I played some around, some mm -hmm. basic I write, and then I stopped to work with the PC, and, and I back, found back to the PC and I was about 16. Yeah. And then I, perhaps I have a friend, he worked with Linux, and then I found directly into the Linux yeah. system. Yeah. This was my thing. And I'm an informatic, I'm a computer scientist. Okay. I studied, um, not electrician, I come from the operating system side, okay. if you understand. So big programming systems for people. Yes. And then, during my university um, life, I get in touch with microcontrollers. Mm -hmm. And I love microcontrollers, 8-bit and controls, build small things. Mm -hmm. We built a USB pro the programmer together okay, with yes. the lecture. Yeah, and I then um, I learned, or I see, wow, it's now possible to have a run a Linux system on a microcontroller. Okay. And that's the reason why we're now here with the Linux board. So, did you also uh, at some time program Linux on a PC, I understand that correctly. Yes. And then you thought, why don't I do this on a microcontroller? Yes, we I also uh, developed drivers on a PC, um, developed server applications, okay. web-based applications, yep. uh, web with databases and things. And um, if you know, um, in, when I was 16 about, a uh, computer like a 200 megahertz per C PC was yep. normal. I remember, the, I remember those days, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For me, and now we are here with the same speed, speed on an embedded board. Yes. And that's I'd like to do, uh, address the, the audience for a second. If you have, have any questions on embedded Linux today, please stay where you are and ask the questions when we are finished with the presentation. I can guarantee you, all of you here, that this is an extreme specialist, Benedict. I've known him as a writer. Uh, I'm an editor myself, and his uh, stuff is really first class and of an extremely high level. Okay, Benedict, I think uh, you have a presentation ready for us. Yes, we have some slides. And uh, we will do this chatting along cheerfully. Okay. And uh, we will look forward to uh, you know, seeing what, what, what this board is and what it can do. Yes. So go, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. On the first slide, we see the nice Electro yes. Linux board. With the penguin. Yes, it's the important things. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Um, I told, um, or a Electro, a typical, comes from the microcontroller. Yeah. That normally um, he likes compilers, he have not so much RAM, mm. he have C, mm. and he have some LEDs and buttons. And now we come from the second side that we come from the, from the Linux, we come from operating systems, we come people who have a mouse, who have a keyboard and something like this, um, <laughs> to work, um, work with the PC. That might be confusing to begin, initially. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, okay. This is our vision, that we now, um, um, comes from the microcontroller, but we will use it like a PC, but we will use it as microcontroller. Yes. Okay. This was the first thing. You were always um, told that we started in the May, May last year, yeah. And um, the idea was not to bring out the Linux board for your readers here and um, work with it. Yeah, no, <laughs> yes, we have the idea that we um, told the people all things behind. Yes, you, you should. have to know. Yes, we are Electro Magazine. Yeah. You know, we explain things, how it works. Yes. 
Uh, so this is why the board is very easy. Mm -hmm. We remove all things we don't need. Okay. We use Great. a really easy processor, an easy ARM9 core. We use an easy um, RAM controller. And um, as, as this storage, we use an SD card. That's all what we need, these three components to have run a Linux system. And um, this was the idea. You don't need a grammar. Normally, you need JTAG debuggers and ISP interface. And something. You don't need. You have a um, cheap SD card. You can put it into your PC, copy the firmware and something like this. On put the it card. back and get it, get it going. Yes. Yeah. This that's your media transport device, that SD card. This is the storage also for the program, for the operating system, all these things. Right. But this is no more for embedded system at this time. Um, the idea was now the next step. Always you talk about Linux. Oh, Linux, yes, Linux. But what is Linux? You have to understand the components behind Linux. Mm -hmm. You have to know what's the bootloader. Mm -hmm. On the BIOS, on the PC, you know the BIOS. And keep them separated. Yes, you know, have to know this is a bootloader. Uh -huh. Linux is only the kernel. It's only the main firmware. And then you have a very huge um, file system where are many different programs and libraries inside. inside. And normally you call Linux, but Linux is more. It's a bootloader, it's a kernel, it's a um, the, the device, it is the operating system, all these things, the tools you need to have to run. So we started with the um, um, readers to explain the different components, the tool chain, from where are, historical, when they started, yes. which universities they started, which people are behind this. So they have your... That's a good background yes. to start. Yeah, this was very simple, um, yeah. the idea, and then we installed the tool chain together, then you know what you are installed. Mm -hmm. Who was the author of the tool chain? And then we compiled the kernel. You know, ah, the kernel is from Linus Torvalds. It's did, from did you test all this, Benedict, prior to the publication, to part one, all the software, or did you gradually develop it along the way? Uh, no, we, we all work together with the things. We test it, we, um, we build it together, then we see directly the results, if it happens, if it's got or are the errors, yeah. and you have directly a feedback. Um, for these things. And this was the idea that we have enough time. Now we are at the moment at um, issue six, yeah. I think, November. Um, of the series. Yes. And now we can go deeper and deeper. And now the next step is that we have a platform for applications. Now we have all things together, mm -hmm. what a normally microcontroller mm -hmm. developer needs. He has a firmware, he has a console, he has drivers. And now the idea is what can we do? We, we will build amazing devices, application, something like this. Perhaps many people ask us why we do have a network um, plug here. Why do you have network plug there, Benedict? And we say there are so much interesting applications that don't need a network plug. Okay. Because if you build a clock, perhaps, you don't need an no, application. No, no, no. Yeah. What should be get, the, get rid of it. the dick um, thing? And then there are many, many things. Um, a bicycle, com a computer for a bicycle, perhaps. Okay. And then you don't need always this huge network block, um, but you can also be, put a network block additional to this. We use, we use USB as a um, system, as an interface for many things. There are also many USB LAN adapters and something like this, so that you can put US network over USB, something like this, because we are coming from microcontroller. Okay. And normally we haven't got this. Stepper mode. Yes, Ooh, I found the here, we are, yeah. which we will um, um, use next articles. For example, a stepper motor. We have a an, an connector here, it's a fits and pole connector, and now you can easily build own um, boards so that can connect a stepper motor. Yep. Um, in the next articles are descriptions how you can control a stepper motor over a Linux. Yep. That you can Do you need a lot of external hardware, uh, Benedict? It doesn't, doesn't look like much now, does it? No, the, it's, you it's need a the motor. few ridiculous components and a few wires. Yes, and the control of the motor. So all the intelligence and the driving is vested in the Linux, Linux board. Yes, additionally, there's a motor driver. It's motor driver, of course, of course. Yeah. You yeah. But then you can directly control a motor. Yeah. And it's very easy. You can use your own language. You can say, oh, it's for me interesting to bring in programming in C. Mm -hmm. Or you say, no, for me it's best to nice thing. Or there are many, many nice, interesting programming languages like Lua, Perl, yes. Python, and something like so this. So you're going to explain to the readers Yes. How exactly to do that and not just present an end product as no. many com companies here, uh, yes. with all due respect, do. No. We delve into the technology, we explain yeah. how it works, and we yeah. offer all the open ends to our readers, yeah. to elect our audience, to, to know how it actually works. Yeah. And we do directly some demos so that you can really see how it works and you can build on, on 
move the motor on something like this. What, what is it a micro stepping? I'm very curious, Benedict. You know, yes. but I always want to know uh, the, the, what's the my, smallest step size. Uh, it's um, one, one sixty. One, one sixty fourth. Yes. yes. Okay. It's, but there are many different motors. Okay. Also, first we have a motor then. With a, with a motor you can build many interesting applications. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you have some in your mind? Yes, I do. Okay. I do, for some mechanical applications. That's why what was I, yes. I was asking. Yep. Perhaps you can automate your coffee machine. Yes, that, oh, is. that would be very nice. <laughs> yes. Like this. Okay, the next thing is, you uh, always a microcontroller board needs a display. Yeah, Every sure. uh, Everybody developer, wants displays. Yes, we'll show them saying, hello Jan, how are you? How are you today? Every day you use this device. Is your coffee ready yet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or send some messages to your wife or something like this. Please bring my coffee. Yeah. Please bring my coffee. <laughs> Thank you dear. Okay. Um, that's okay. why we built a um, um, display board. There are different display boards, um, uh, easy character displays or displays um, where you can um, yeah. paint yeah. Um, graphics, like, graphics. Yes, and menus yes. and something like this. We also wrote some small um, command line tools and some libraries mm -hmm. all, um, that you see or have here some examples you can use, uh, build your own um, display application and something yeah. like this. So now we have. It's, it's controlled over SPI. Yes, um, so that's very, very flexible. Yes, that gives have, you a lot of power. Yes, all the typical microcontroller interfaces we have got here. Sure. That's important. SPI, E2C, GPIO, ADC, okay. PVM. Something like this. Now we have two things, and now we can build better applications. Okay. Perhaps you have something older. Yeah, I'm, I'm always, all, I'm always thinking in the back of my mind for applications. Okay. <laughs> have a look at the next. Okay. More I opens. We want more I opens, Benedict. Yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and that's normally. Normally, you have to um, need IOs for all things. Yes. Yeah, sure. Control buttons to yeah. control LEDs. Input as well as output. Yes. And, and we use um, IO expander with E2C interfaces, yeah. and then you can um, bring to this board um, seven of these um, okay. I.O. expander. That means you have seven, um, about seven, 120 yeah. um, I.O. It's very All enough. All individually addressable. Yeah. Yeah. And it's important for us as a microcontroller development as we have many, uh, there's a motor, a display, and many I.O.s, digital, and something like this. And uh -huh. <laughs> This is what we uh, firstly here show here on this thread yeah. um, is um, for January. Uh, this that we integrated all these things into our extension kit. That we have a, a common base platform for the readers or for the people mm -hmm. who want to um, work with this board. That you have a display, you have a buzzer, yeah. or that you can yeah. give an uh, audible feedback. Yes, Beeps. feedback. You have yeah. some um, buttons that you can control a menu. Yeah. And also the I/O expander is down it's under the underneath. Yeah, okay. So and we have a clock. Okay, a real time clock. Real time clock. It's very with important the calendar. Yeah. that the coffee starts at six. Okay, coffee or not should start at six randomly. <laughs> and if not, big error. <laughs> <laughs> or you have cold coffee. In cold coffee. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and also um, the same connector we put here on this, to, straight to the board. Yes. And everything's done. Yeah. You can also yeah. build your own connector with more. And sure. Between, and then you can connect so you can, motors yeah. and something like this. Is it also possible, Benedict, to have more of these expansion boards even on the same cable, or is that not is that not a good idea? Um, it can because we use E2C for the main things, mm -hmm. and you can here plug your addresses and something okay. like this, yeah. Yeah. so that you can configure okay. these things like this. And aha, 3D printer. Yeah, this uh, is what we have what, in mind. That's <laughs> what we must have. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps you see this, all these <laughs> method things. Um, with Electro, we planned to, um, this is a um, version of a 3D printer from the Electro Lab. Yep, I, I recognize it. Yep. Yeah. Um, we take it, and now we are planned to um, pimp it up with all these nice things. Yep. That we have a Linux controlled 3D printer mm -hmm. um, with all these um, very interesting things we have, like network, like um, USB connectors. We can directly um, calculate images here on this, or, or, or complete um, cases or mm -hmm. um, um, housings. We have enough power. We can build a web graphical interface. Okay. Um, on the last um, issue, we showed the people how they can um, build their own web based application. Yes, that is in the December issue, I think. Correct? Or is it, uh, no, yes. it is in the November issue. Yeah, that's yeah, the, the, the web, the web server, do it yourself style. Yes, yeah. where we build a small button that we control the LED. It's not very interesting, but it shows the reader how it works. Okay. Um, in the next version, I think, 
we um, show the people how you can use uh, so with a typical uh, phone, something like this, yeah. so that you can lie in, in your living room and say, oh, coffee. Coffee, please. <laughs> Dim the lights, please. Yeah, um, I have to go to bed. Yeah. And these components are very interesting for the 3D printer. Okay. That yeah. we have a user interface, web-based user interface, a display directly on the board. So this thing is really internet ready in, in any way you like. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just waiting to be on the web yeah. and controlled from Augsburg or Munich or yeah. wherever you are. Or from Limbrick directly. Or from Limbrick, yeah. yeah from Castle Limbrick to Augsburg. Print directly. Yeah. Very interesting. Distance thing. doesn't exist anymore, now, does it, uh, Benedict? Uh, no, no, no. Certainly not with Linux. Thank you. Okay. Um, Eagle. Aha. This is it is it's an open source project. Yes, well. Also, the layout of the board is open source. It's very interesting. This is an easy two-layer board. Do you know okay. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's cheap, easy to make. Yeah. It's very interesting. But this is a, a big R. Um, though it's escaping, it's not. It's very interesting to study it. But now you can take the files mm. and build your own board. Mm. Yeah. That's not very difficult because we described how it yeah, works, sure. the schematic, so and then you can say, oh, this board is interesting, but now I have an idea it must be yellow yeah. and must be with... So, yeah, so you're saying to the audience, go, go ahead, do your own eagle design, yes. extend it the way, any way you like, yeah. and make your own board. Yes. That is the true open source spirit. I this think. is the idea. Yeah. And then you can publish also your project on the lector. We have the new lector. Labs website yes. where you can publish your own project. So hey, people, yeah. there are um, interesting ideas. I found some tux pad mm. to play music yeah. and something like this. Where people try to build own application. They discuss about this, can change, yeah. um, and it's very interesting because you are free to develop your own board and something like this. And one interesting thing I found in the internet um, was this. Ah, <laughs> this is a case for, case for the board. The board, yes. board, yes also made with uh, a, a, a plastic pr reproduction machine. Yes. Yes. With a 3D printer. A 3D printer. It comes from the open source community. Some say, oh, it's very interesting to have a case for this. Yeah. And then they paint it as a public. That is all also, also open source everything, Benedict, isn't it? Yes. Files and how people can yes. do that. And in the, I think it's in the January 2013 issue, you're going to do a roundup of questions and feedback, aren't yes. you? Yes. Because the, we have, have a hell of a lot of feedback on the project, on our forums, through emails and so on. Yeah. And I understand you are going to coordinate that and put that in the magazine so everybody can read what's happening in the community. Is that yeah. correct? That's correct. It's very interesting because this Linux I told I'm a computer scientist, yeah. you are an engineer. Yeah. There are so many different peoples mm -hmm. and I have so many different interests. Mm -hmm. Now in the last issue we start a question or um, yeah. uh, that the people can say us, oh please tell more about Linux inside. Or yeah. please tell yeah. more about how I can build a graphical uh, programming. And that exactly. is so that we find what the readers are will learn and what and the interests so that we in the next issue can um, yeah, present it. Uh, as elector, we are always very pleased to have that sort of feedback. Yeah, we we are. And we get uh, many, many, and, and that belongs to the open yeah. open source community and the open yeah. source spirit very, very much. To have criticisms, to have improvements, yeah. to have feedback. Um, so it looks like uh, like a very promising project mm -hmm. from right from the start, Benedict. We were surprised at elector about the hell of feedback it yes. generated. And um, I can congratulate you now because uh, I just got an, an email just if, before this presentation that we have reached the 1500 piece sales level for your board, okay. which is uh, really amazing. Okay. Oh, when, we start, when, we, when we started out, we thought, well, a few enthusiasts here and there across the globe, but you're now past the 1500 pieces sales. So c congratulations on that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, I would like to uh, interrupt now to and go to the uh, to the audience, please. If there are um, any uh, questions you would like to ask Benedict or myself on the project, my name is um, Michael Blank. Michael, okay. I'm coming from Stuttgart, and uh, I would like to ask: uh, How do you see this uh, product in comparison to the Raspberry Pi? How do does it compare to the Raspberry Pi in in your? Oh, you. this yeah. is a very, very typical question. We <laughs> get um, many, many things. Um, I don't have a Raspberry Pi here, but um, we are come from the microcontroller. We are typical from AVR, 8-bit, mm -hmm. and something like this. We see it like a very small, um, um, less power, 
and these boards only need a half a watt, okay. 100 milliampere. Um, um, the Raspberry Pi is more for multimedia. You have an interface for monitor and something like this. It, HDMI and even. Yes, a very strong, mm -hmm. much more power than this. But for typical microcontroller applications, you don't need this power. You don't need, uh, need this very, um, yeah, it's like we call it in overkill. German. Yes, um, Kanonen auf Spatzen. Kanonen auf Spatzen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We yeah. call it, and yeah. this is the main difference. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. I'll um, ask, are there any further questions? Please go ahead. Please, yeah. everybody, feel free to ask. Okay. This is open source, open source stuff, and we are open source, as you no may have noticed, very much. Please, go ahead. Well, uh, one thing I was always wondering about was uh, where's the connection between the uh, normal ARM architecture and the Apex bootloader, bootloader for example. Where is uh, the step from the normal bootloading um, ARM architecture to the Apex and then going on with root file system and so on? Where is the connection between the ARM and the, and the bootloader yeah. exactly? How is it implemented? The bootloader, yeah. as, as we, we use as bootloader and Apex. This is really, really a small uh, bootloader. Um, the bootloader, it, it's, if you connect the power, then the bootloader comes from the SD card. It is copied, co is copied automatically into the internal SRAM. And then the internal SRAM, the, um, the, ex, uh, the bootloader starts in the internal SRAM. And then firstly, we have to initialize the SD RAM and then we have to um, um, copy the kernel from the SD card into the SD RAM. Uh, from, from the ARM controller itself, uh, does he know about uh, where, where is the step uh, which he knows uh, that he has to start uh, the bootloader from the SD card? This is uh, normally in an ARM um, processor. On the PC, you have got a BIOS. Yeah. Then you know the first 512 bytes are the code that you uh, get and execute. Um, with ARM controllers, you have normally a ROM inside. Mm -hmm. You can imagine it as a BIOS. And, and the ROM, um, the code in the ROM is, um, it can be um, tried to boot from the SD card, can try from a USB, can try to boot from UART. Um, we have here some jumpers um, where you can control the boot order, on, like you have on a PC. Okay. And this is the first thing in the ARM core that um, gets the bootloader inside the SRAM. Yeah, normally uh, I think it's called flexible in-system programming or something like that. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Come on, people. Ask your question, please. Hello. Good morning. Uh, I'm just interested in the expansion board and I wanted to know if it's uh, available from a lector and what time it will be available. That is a good question, Benedict. At what Perhaps time? You, at what time? Um, the expansion board. I, I, I'm afraid I can't ex put that in the exact time frame yet. It will be January, February. January, February. In any case, quarter one, 2013, guaranteed in any case. Pro problem, it will be available. Yes, absolutely. We are uh, supporting this project in any way we can. We are very pleased with it, with the response. So we are continuing the positive response. Thank you. Okay, thank you. concerning the uh, open source uh, nature of the system. Yeah. Um, do you think it will be possible for a uh, hobbyist to manufacture such a board with this type of uh, CPU? You said it was open source, but somehow I'm not sure whether you can uh, really build a board with such a, um, a package. Oh, okay, Benedict? The, the, the question is, okay. it is an open source project in, in, in software terms, etc. Yeah. And we've got the, the Eagle yes. PCB layouts. Yeah. But then the question is, how do people, if it's really open source, can they solder it themselves, the, 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 the controller? Yeah. I think the answer is, is no, and you shouldn't bother, because we've done it for you. <laughs> we've done it for you, free of charge, compliments of Elector. You can do it, of course. I do it like, like so, <laughs> um, but in general, we manufacture these boards ready soldiers for you. With maybe 
then direct, I don't know, perhaps a few components hand soldered. But it's also um, be possible as hobbyist to be solder something like this oh, yes, by yourself. Oh yes, with a reflow of. Oh. Yeah, this is very. You can go into the kitchen. The first yeah. steps I try to solder is Re <laughs> remove the pitcher <pizza. laughs> and put the chip into put the, the oven. Chip in. Yeah. So any more questions from the uh, from the audience, please? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, please. This is open source, please. I was wondering uh, which um, bootloader do you recommend? Uh, to work with, I mean, in between Apex and Ubud, and um, above all about uh, an SPI interface. That's my question. Yeah. Which bootloader do you recommend, uh, Benedict? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They're the, the, the main or the, in the past the um, best well known was Ubud. Ubud is very exciting. There are many boards that supported Ubud and something like this. But we. Um, Find with this processor, I found um, um, Apex, and this is a really small bootloader. It's also an open platform that you can build and plug in driver modules for USB for different processors. And but it's not so so big because we have only about 100 kilobytes inside SRAM, mm -hmm. and the bootloader must complete fit into this RAM. That's the a U good challenge to keep that as small as possible. Yes, yeah. and as fast as possible. Yeah. In a SPI interface, so it's a good selection, a good choice. I mean, uh, for an um, SPI uh, interface, mm -hmm. so it's a, a good uh, choice. Yes, it is yeah. SD card. At the first step, the SD card is um, um, is, is interfaced as SPI. Okay. The first bootloader we copied via SPI to the internal SRAM, and then we switched to an SDRC interface. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for for your questions. Well, thank you, uh, everybody, for, uh, for joining us and being with us. Um, it, it's been an Im immense pleasure to have you around. It was a great show, I think. We've seen some, some uh, things we didn't know at Elect Elector even. Benedict, that is great. As always, we'll always like to hear that. We would like to thank the people of Element 14 here at the stand for hosting us, for having us around on their brilliant stand here at, uh, in Munich at the Electronica 2012 show. Uh, we also uh, thank everybody at the other side of all the LCD screens. So the, the people watching this web, webcast, um, they are all behind the Linux systems, hopefully, Benedict, <laughs> watching as well. Um, and Elector, in closing, is very proud to be able to have been able to publish this series together with Benedict, and as I've said, it's been uh, it has completely taken us over in terms of success. And finally, I would like to say, stay tuned to Elector.tv. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you sehr. Und uh, auf Wiedersehen in Munich oder Nürnberg. Much Spaß. Thank you.